Open Educational Resources, or OERs. If you don't know a lot about OERs, you have come to the right place. This video will show you how OERs are opening the walls of classrooms and increasing equity with educational access for people all over the world. Sound too good to be true? Perhaps it is. Continue to watch for two perspectives on the value of OERs. First, let's talk about what OERs are. You can Google OERs and get several definitions. Several foundations and organizations have defined OER. Let's start with the William and Flora Hewitt Foundation. OERs are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use and repurposing by others. The Organization of Economic and Cooperation and Development defines OERs as digitized materials offered freely and openly for educators, students, and self-learners to use and reuse for teaching, learning, and research. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization defines OERs as teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise, that reside in the public domain and have been released under an open license that permits at no cost access, use, adaptation, redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. All that being said, we have found the most definitions include the following components. An open copyright license is required. Rights of access, adaptation, and replication are included at all times, and there are no non-commercial limitations for use of OERs. What types of OERs are out there and available? Educational resources encompass a lot of things, but they can include like syllabi, lesson plans, videos, software, tests, teaching techniques, group activities, writing prompts, textbooks, learning modules, experiments, simulations, course designs. There are no platform restraints for OERs. What are the benefits of using OERs? Materials like textbooks and curricula can be up to date at all times. No waiting on publishers to update products. No waiting on anything. They're available at all times for updates. They're adaptable. Personalized material and curricula and resources to best meet the need of your students and learners. And schools are no longer limited by their location or money. It provides equal access to all. This opens the walls of education for everybody regardless of location or financial ability. It sounds great. Free and adaptable resources and curriculum. So let's take a look at an example. CK12 is, an is a K-12 education OER. The CK-12 Foundation is a California-based nonprofit organization whose stated mission is to reduce the cost of and increase access to K-12 education in the United States and worldwide. Their resources include digital textbooks, lesson plans, practice materials, specifically in math and science, although they are starting to add additional content daily. Excited to use OERs yet? You might be asking yourself, where can I find OERs? It's recommended that you do one of three things. First, use a specialized OER search engine, like a Creative Commons search. Second, locate a suitable OER repository, one like the MIT OpenCourseWare. And third, you could use an OER directory site, like the OER Commons site. These are all great places to get started. Is that all about OER? I don't think so. Although OER has many advantages, the uptake of OER has not yet reached the expected level. The biggest concern with OER is its quality. Many teachers stated that they would rather use materials created by themselves or created by people that they know because they can guarantee the authenticity and the depth of the materials. Another problem is time. 
it is very time consuming to find the appropriate resources for their courses because there are a lot of open content do not fit the teacher's teaching goals. Also, teachers may select materials of the same topic in different resources and re-edit them. Although it is one advantage of OER, it also costs a lot of time. In addition, as I mentioned a moment ago, because teachers are not sure about the quality of the content in OER, they need to spend some efforts in assessing them. Some other barriers for using OER include not knowing where to find and how to use materials online. Some teachers even never heard about OER, especially in developing countries. And for those who use OER globally, localization of the content can be a demanding job. When it comes to the barriers of creating and sharing OER, the number one problem is lack of skills of development materials. OER is not just a video or a PDF on a website, it has its own format and its lessons. Even if many educators have already known the value of OER, they still cannot develop such materials without some training. In addition, rewards are very important to some people. Rewards may include financial incentives and acknowledgement from people who use their content. But being OER means it has to be free and re-editable by users. Legal issue is another barrier. There are still many content cannot be released, and just as barriers for using OER time is also another problem for teachers who have already many classes to teach and researches to do. This is a general picture of OER presented by Rain Russell and Newgum. Thanks for watching.